It is a sold-out crowd at the Mountaineer Racetrack, about 45 minutes from Spadafora's hometown of Pittsburgh. Both men have new trainers as we look at the main event. With Shane Mosley moving up, the IBF Lightweight Championship is vacant. Tonight, Pito Cardona and Paul Spadafora will battle for that crown. Cardona is 24 years of age. The only two losses on his resume, split decision losses to Charles the Natural Murray and Hector Lopez. We've seen Cardona here on the news in October. He won a 12-round split decision against Golden Johnson. Then in February, took care of Joel Perez in seven rounds. But Cardona realized he needed some help, so he brought in veteran trainer Kenny Adams. The big key is basically my experience that I have over him, you know. And basically, I, um, I hired, you know, the best trainer in the world right now to get me doing what I'm supposed to be doing, especially against the softball. And basically, um, my pressure, my movement, my jab, my angles, everything in play. I'm going to put everything together tonight. The new Pittsburgh kid, Paul Spadafora, comes from a boxing family. The 23-year-old is 26-0 with 13 knockouts, but against lesser competition. We've seen Spadafora here on the news before. In October, he took care of Sam Girard, winning a 10-round decision, the same Girard that Cardona knocked out. In January, here on the news in Chicago, he won a 10-round decision against Rocky Martinez. He has a new trainer as well. He's Jesse Reed. I'm more relaxed in a ring when it coming up, being able to come off my angles with more, with more punches. Relaxing. When you relax, you you punch harder. You punch a lot more sharper and a lot more crisper. So I feel that that helped me a lot. That that that's what that's going to give me the edge to, for this fight. Being 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 able to make a miss but pay. It should be a hard fight between these two, but Cardona feels he's the better man. Yeah. I don't think he's going to take the body punches. That's one thing. And I'm pretty sure he's going to watch that body, even try to protect that body. But. He's never been in a war like he's going to be in this tonight. He's never been in that kind of battle. I see myself outboxing him, and I'm going to look forward to going to 12 rounds when winning this time you know, decision. I'm going to push show for ESPN. I'm going to push show ESPN. I'm going to show the world that I am the champion of the world. I'm going to show the world that I am somebody to be reckoned with, and especially Prosper Fro, who's already talking too much. Paul Spadafora is a guy who eats, sleeps, and dreams about boxing, and never before have we seen Pito Cardona so focused as he is for tonight's shot at a championship. Some subtle things to watch for tonight because these are guys with two very different styles as we take you inside Atlas's world. Tonight, when IBF number one rank Israel Cardona meets number three rank Paul Spadafora, it will be a classic contrast of styles. Cardona is pure power and pressure with big fight experience. Spadafora is a southpaw with boxing ability, but is untested in big fights. For Cardona to win, he'll try to trap Spadafora against the rope and pound the body with savage punches, which would take away Spadafora's legs and breath. Pito will also have to try to improvise at times against a mover like Spadafora. In this move, Cardona misses with a right, but turns with his opponent and unloads another. Spadafora is slick and when pressed to the ropes, likes to turn his man to get out of trouble. But Cardona will throw punches when his opponent steps away. Spadafora is undefeated because he hits but does not get hit. Here he punches, then slips a punch and gets into position to counter. Moves like this will give him a chance tonight. And Cardona can't walk in straight. When he gets close, he must move his head or else he'll get jabbed to death. Moving the head will enable him to counter those jabs with his own right. It'll be a game of cat and mouse, and at stake is the IBF lightweight championship. Well, that is the Atlas World. Teddy, a couple of other subtle things to look for. You're Cardona, I'm Spadafora. Cardona likes to move his man around, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He has to do with a guy that's moving like Spadafora. So Cardona's gonna make a move where he wants to. So if he's moving this way, Cardona's gonna throw over here with a left hook, just to make his move, man move there so he can run him into a right hand. Okay, now let's go to the other side of the table. Paul Spadafora, you'll be Spadafora now, I'm Cardona. Spadafora, even though he's a southpaw, he's a natural righty, and he likes to do some different things as well. Yeah, his slip over here. What do you think I'm gonna hit you with this, right? Right. Wrong. Ha-ha. 
Oh, well, funny haha? -ha? No, I didn't, I didn't mean it funny. I just, like, you know. <laughs> so those are some of the things. Both men like to move their men around. Cardona's the more powerful of the two. That is our main event tonight. The vacant IBF lightweight championship is at stake. Pito Cardona is ranked number one in the world by the IBF. 24 years of age out of Hartford, Connecticut. He has a professional record of 31 and 2 with 23 knockouts, two losses, split decision losses to quality opposition in Charles Murray and Hector Lopez. Paul Spatafor, the new Pittsburgh kid, is 23 years of age. He went in at 135 pounds. You see Jesse Reed, his new trainer, in the corner. Spatafor at 26 and 0 with 13 knockouts, but he has not been in against the competition that Cardona has been in against. Pumped up, spatter for a crowd. Unified rules will be used for tonight's main event. And they go as follows. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop at accidental cuts. They'll go to the scorecards after four rounds are complete. The referee is from West Virginia. He is Dave Johnson. And now the three judges. There was some controversy about the judges. They will be Dave Hess from Dubuque, Iowa. Joe Dwyer from Floral Park, New York, and Gary Wolf from Parksville, West Virginia. Originally, they had two judges from West Virginia. Teddy, they had to get the Attorney General of the state to overrule a West Virginia rule in boxing that 10-ounce gloves could be used. They wanted a big ring, although it's only 19 feet by 19 feet inside the rope. So, really, even though Cardone is the number one ranked guy, it seems as if the deck, the deck might have been a little stacked against him. It's got to worry you. Obviously, the old-time guys say, I carry my judges in the fist, and this Cardona would like his chances of knocking out Spadafore. He's a stronger guy. Spadafore has never been in with the kind of guy that Cardona's been in there with. But still, you want an even shot. You can't depend on knocking everyone out. Take a look at the knockout ratio for these two. Cardona never been stopped. Now there obviously has been Spadafore. 15 of the 23 Cardona knockouts have come within the first three rounds. Cardona says he is at his best. Five and a half month layoff, longest of his career. Says he's been on weight for about two weeks. Weight in light, 132 and a half pounds. Spot of four, a four and a half month layoff, longest of his career. He says he's been on weight for two weeks. Well, we know more. I mean, one of the ways to handicap this fight, we know more about Cardona than we know about Spadafore. Spadafore has not been in there, as you said, with top competition. Cardona has. He belongs at that level. We know he can fight at that level. We know he has a real good chin. We don't know about the chin of Spadafore. I'm sure Spadafore's people do not want to find out about his chin. But that boy, this is what this fight might come down to. When Spadafore, if he gets hit, and when he gets hit sometime in the fight, how he can take the punch of Cardona. Because somewhere along the line, you would think he's going to get hit. But he's going to want to box the kind of fight that he's boxing right now, which is stay on the outside, pitter-patter punches, sharp shoot punches, and that's let Cardona get set to punch. Well, a combination from Spadafore. Common opponent, Sam Girard. Last year here on the news, Spadafore won a 10-round decision against him. In January of 98, Cardona knocked him out in three rounds. Cardona says this is the first time he's actually sparred with Southpaws to get ready for a Southpaw. And Teddy, what about the fact that both guys have new trainers, new lead trainers? But both guys have, obviously that could work two ways. The work where you're not familiar with the guy, where you try to do something new, but they both have experienced guys with each other. In spatter four, as Jesse Reed, who's a real good, solid trainer. Been the trainer of Orlando Canizales, bantamweight champ for a long time. No longer bantamweight champ, but one of the terrific bantamweight champs in the world. Of course, Kenny Adams, the Army trainer. He's been in there with Kennedy McKenney, former bantamweight champ. He's helping Cardona now. Good guys in the corner, no doubt about that. Spatter four is round. Good, solid, round one. 
Jenny, round number two underway between Kido Cardona and Paul Spadafora. Neither man landed a jab in the first round. Spadafora 0 for 26, Cardona 0 for 8. You would think that Spadafora right now is fighting the fight, even though I thought he won the first round, the fight that Cardona wants. Because Spadafora, the quicker guy, the slicker guy, the guy that we don't know about his chin, is fighting inside with Cardona, who's the stronger guy. But he's getting his way so far by being smart inside, by moving his head on either side, like that, by staying close enough where he's not on the outside of Cardona's punches. But you would still think that Cardona would be happy to have Spadafor right in front of him, not on the outside where he has to look for him. But Cardona's not going to the place you would expect him to go early in this fight with this guy standing in front of him. He's not going to the body. And if he doesn't go early, it's not going to help him late, Bob. Cardona, he's got to go early. Cardona came under some fire when he had that split decision win against Golden Johnson. He was supposedly offered a fight with Shane Mosley for this IBF lightweight championship. Cardona injured his hand in that fight against Johnson. And he says that HBO was pressuring him because they wanted a soft touch for Mosley. They wanted an injured Cardona. Lou DeBell of HBO outspoken against Cardona. And Cardona says... I will prove all of my critics wrong tonight winning in this guy's backyard. See, Spadafore is showing people that you can be slick and you don't have to box on the outside with the stronger guy. You can box on the outside, use your legs, or you can stay inside and move your head on the side and stay real compact and take little steps outside. And that's what Spadafore is choosing to do right now. It's being very effective. He's stepping out, he's punching before Cardona can come in, and then he's getting out again. Good right hook, though, by Cardona. And that's the one equalizer here, is power. There's, there's no doubt about that. Spadafora is not a big puncher. No, he's not. And again, he has not been in there with the competition to show us whether or not he can handle a big punch. Cardona has. Spadafora has to be careful that his early success does not get him drunk, where he'll get drunk with a big punch later on. Even though he's getting away with fighting inside, I don't think it's the right way to fight Cardona. And late in the fight, he might pay for it. And Teddy, unlike in our first fight, Frazier against West, where West gave away some rounds early, but West doesn't have power. Cardona can give away a little bit early because he does have that power. And he needs his guy to cooperate with him. When Spadafore makes those turns like he's doing there and just pot shots, makes his turns, changes his distance, doesn't lay inside, he, does, he does not give Cardona a chance to unroll his power. It's the best way for him to fight. So far, Spadafore has been slightly better through two.